Welcome to Jordan and Drew, the sports crew, the EWC girls season recap for the 2021 to 2022 season, girls basketball season and the boys basketball season. They've come and gone, but we're going to be focusing on the girls basketball side here for the Eastern Wisconsin Conference in this episode. And you guessed it, I'm joined by Robert Schimmick. He He's the EWC sports guy. So Robert, how are you doing today? Doing good. Yeah, and we're going to be talking a lot about, you know, girls basketball here. And like I said, EWC, let's get right into it. We'll do it how we usually do our breakdowns or whenever we're talking the conference as a whole. We're going to start from the bottom, work our way up to the top, talk some tiers, talk about for next year, talk about stats, all that good stuff. So let's get started here right away. And at the bottom, the Ron Colley Jets, 0 and 14 in conference and 3 and 2020 or 3 and 22 overall for the Jets. So, you know, not exactly a you know, not a great season for the Ron Colley Jets. I know they were young, right? I mean, they graduated a lot of people last year, you know, who contributed to this team, but it was just a tough year for the Jets. I mean, they almost they they competed in their in their playoff game, their lone playoff game on that Tuesday or on that Wednesday night. It was they lost by 15, however, it was only a seven-point game at half. But, you know, looking at the season as a whole, it was just, you know, a tough year for the Jets. You know, luckily, Lauren Stangle, their leading scorer, she's returning. She graduates in 2025. So, you know, you have someone younger there to hopefully lead this squad. But really, and I, and again, I, we say this a lot, but a rebuilding year in high school, I know, I know it's not really ideal, but that's kind of what it was here for the Jets, Robert. Yeah, you know, I always say, like, transition year. Like, just like... Yeah, that's a better word. Like, just a transition year where... But, yeah, I mean, obviously, I mean, you know, I was a Ron Colley fan. Uh, the boys used up probably a lot of their basketball wins this year. So, I mean, yeah, you look at it, you see a lot of 2023, a lot of 24, 25s in their roster. So, Really, I mean, only one place they can go from the seller is up. And I think the bottom of the EWC next year, there's several teams you can look at. And they should be competitive with those teams. That's literally all I have to say about the Jets. Hopefully, they'll uh, get some more wins next year. Yeah, I guess that's kind of all we can hope for, right? But we'll talk, you know, the Sheboygan Fels Fal Falcons, they are second last in the conference here, 4-10, and 9-17 overall. You know, there was, you know, years ago, or not even years ago, you know, it wasn't too long ago, right, Robert? You know, we're looking at the Sheboygan Falls team. They were, you know, competing for conference titles. You know, they had some great players. And now, you know, it's the team's just gotten, they, you know, just transition year right again. So, but they, they still do have some solid players here for the Sheboygan Falls Falcons, Falcons here. Addison Schweely, you know, was a player you've mentioned during the year who's, who came up big, you know, averaging 10 a game. But again, another squad here, you know, they got a good chunk of 2022s, but there are, you know, a decent amount of 2023s, you know, Shwili, who I mentioned, 2025, right? So, you know, like you mentioned, the only, you know, the only way is up, right, for this team, you know, they are second last here, only getting four conference wins, but things are certainly looking good here as well, you know, for, for the Falcons. Yeah, and... You mentioned their 2022s, and a lot of their players and their leaders were 2022s. So that's, you know, that's just one point of, you know, concern right away. But, yeah, I, I did say, like, Addison Schliwe showed, like, really, uh, really good flashes at times. And just, just her length gave uh, opposing offenses trouble, and she can score at a lot of levels of the floor. So that's just one thing I saw. And, yeah, I mean, other than that, don't really know many of their players coming back. Most of their players I knew are graduating. So, yeah, they're a team definitely. I mean, we still coming into her sophomore year, might not, you know, have that experience to lead them, you know, to a great conference position. So that I still think they might be a team down there with Ron Colley, with some of these, you know, teams that are competing at the bottom still. Yeah, and last thing with, with we here, um, you know, looking at, uh, she was a named honorable mention as well. I know we didn't talk conference teams yet. We'll talk about that in this episode as well. But you think, you know, for her, I, I mean, certainly we could potentially see, you know, a second team with her. I know we'll talk about it later, but um, 
I think, you know, if we can see her take that leadership role here, you know, being having that experience on varsity now, you know, average of 10 a game your freshman year. I think it's looking good for her, especially with that Addison Schley, we for her. So we'll talk now to Rivers Raiders. Interesting year for the Raiders. 12 and 14 overall. And, you know, four and 10 in conference. So, you know, two rivers. I mean, this was a team going into the year. Uh, Robert, you and I both were, were high on because, you know, they have arguably two of the, two of the best or two of the top scores in the conference. And, you know, Allison Kakis and then Kenzie Graff. But it just things just didn't click, you know, not I'm, for this Raiders team. I, I know we were talking about this before the year here. You know, they really, you know, shooting the ball was it seemed to be a struggle, I think, for this. You know, two rivers squad, especially with those two being, you know, post post dominant players here, and especially you know, the leading scores of the team. It went fifteen for Graf, fifteen for Kakis, and then four point two for Ashland Delman. So that kind of you know that drop off too. You know, maybe not having that third option kind of may- maybe hurt this squad in some games that mattered most. But yeah, I, I guess this this year for TR, I mean, it's going to be interesting next year now with. You know just how how it's gonna work out because if I'm not mistaken, you or you got Kakis for one more year, right? And then Graf graduated this year. So I, I guess having Kakis coming back is a plus, but you know, losing losing a player like like Graf, I, I think that really hurts this Raiders squad. But Robert, what, what do you see from this two reverse team, you know, this year and years forward? Yeah, you know, you hit it you hit it right on the head, most of the things. Uh you know, Kinsey Graf, uh, really their lone shooter. Their next best shooter, Ashlyn Delman, with three for ten. So three threes on the year uh, did, did have their next highest three-point shooter. Not very good. And, yeah, that, that's just basically what you said, just lack to find that third score, third, fourth option where it just you can just, you know, take the – Take the the gas off uh, Graf and Kakis there for a night or two, but I mean, yeah. And then Graf Graf, you know, was their leader this year, so Kakis will be their leader next year. And uh, that she'll really, I mean, I don't know um, what other players how much with Graf gone they'll really step up, but yeah, not looking too good without you know a third fourth option, like a known third fourth option coming back. But who knows? So I say like, yeah, as of now, I don't think Kakis can fully handle the load all by herself. So I definitely, I don't see them, you know, increasing their wins, but who knows? They could have a girl come up or they could have other girls come and fill that role. Yeah, I, I agree with what you said here. Uh, next up here, the Valors Vikings. You know, we, we usually don't see them you know, around this here, middle to bottom uh, for the Vikings, you know, finishing five and nine in conference and 10 and 16 overall. But, there, there's some problems now because, you know, your leading scorer here, Carissa Hummel, averaging 14.2 a game, eight boards. She's graduating, right? And then Taylor Hummel, well, their third leading scorer, averaging five a game. She's also graduating. So, you know, there, there's questions now for, you know, who's going to step up? We saw Caitlin Fisher this year average, or she averaged nine a game, you know. So she's a potential candidate here to step up, you know, for next year because she's coming back. But, you know, they... Valors, you know, they're known for scheduling the tough non-con games. So it's not going to be easy, I think, for the Vikings next year, non-con, especially. And then in the conference as well, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be tough for them, I think. But, you know, Robert, other, you know, what, what do you think for this Viking squad? All right. So, yeah, this Valors Viking squad, you know, um, yeah, obviously you, you said it, you hit it on the head again. You know, they're two of their top players, you know, they lose to graduation. I mean, not too familiar with this, the other players in this Valor squad. Didn't get to see them this year. So, yeah, I definitely think, you know, without those two players coming back, they're going to be at the bottom, um, unfortunately. And then, I mean, they just had a tough, a lot of tough stretch of games at the end of the year. Like, I think we've noted previously, like this, just they had those two wins and then all the rest of them were losses from February 8th all the way back to December 7th. Yeah, I don't know. It just, it's you never know what can turn a program like you know transition year they might need next year to a different group of kids or but yeah it's it just looking to be you know with those two players gone might they might struggle next year they might not who really knows it's uh, girls basketball they're at the bottom four teams and who knows 
Yeah. I mean, you're right with that. Hopefully we can see, you know, them climb up. But again, it looks like it's looking like a transition year here for the Vikings. But we'll talk about the Chilton Tigers here. Seven and seven in conference, 14 and 12 overall. One of the best years for Chilton. You know, it, it's been a while, I think, for the for the Tigers. And credit where credit's due. Olivia Hurl, what a year. You know, we'll talk about some of her accolades later in the episode. But, uh, Robert, quick thing here. Do we know? You know, is there any word on where she's going for college? I'm not seeing anything. Okay. Yeah, because I, I know we there, – there's talks, you know, double WLC. But, yeah, we'll, we'll – We'll wait and see kind of what happens there. But let's talk, you know, about, about how they went this year. You know, again, Olivia Hurl, 23 and nine a game, you know, impressive stuff. Four assists to go along with that leading her team in all three of those stats. And, you know, yeah, it was just an impressive year, you know, flat out for her. And that really, you know, propelled this team, I'd say, you know, to where, where they were a 500 record here in conference. Uh, her younger sister, Adeline Hurl, uh, 2025 graduates. So she already was named honorable mention this year. So it's definitely looking good, you know, having another hurl along the way, right? And then otherwise, you know, their teams they're they're surrounded. They got some 2023s, a good bit of them. Some, and then also, you know, you know, some juniors and seniors with that as well. Um, and freshmen. You know, just include all four grade levels there. They have a nice group returning. For the varsity squad, and of course with JV, that always helps out. But yeah, Robert, what are your thoughts on the Chilton Tigers? Yeah, so these uh, Chilton Tigers, you know, I got to see them once, and yeah, obviously Hurl is special. Um, but yeah, they got they got some nice players coming back. You know, Hurl's sister. You got uh, Ariana Davis, twenty twenty five center, six feet tall. She was actually, um, you know. Once she like pro- pro- fully progresses and she gets more years under her belt, she's going to be a really a uh, force down low. And then you just got some other good players with them too. So I definitely think this isn't the end of Chilton. You know, one might see her all graduate. And no, I, I just I, I think she uh, continues. Or sorry, this program you know still continues forward with a solid year next year. Yeah, why not? I think you know this was a building block year truly because like. Chilton finishing 500 record in the EWC is big, I think, for the squad. And let's talk, you know, about those top three squads here. We'll start with Keel, right? I mean, yet again, Keel having a dominant year under first year head coach here, Jamie Vandermuse for the Raiders. 21 and six overall, they finished and they went through the EWC 11 and three. So, very, you know, it was a great year here for. Them, the sadly, their year, their year ended on that sectional semi at TR against the Brilliant Lions. But we'll talk, you know, about the good stuff here for the Raiders. Emma Edelman led the way there, 15.8 a game. And then Corn Fromm as well, averaging 14. Uh, and she'll be coming back. And Jocelyn April also averaging eight for the squad. But yeah, Robert, what did you see from this, you know, this Kiel team? They, I mean, they, they had a great year. And yet again, I mean, Keel has been, you know, let's let's say a dynasty for basketball these past, you know, however so long the Walsdorf days, right? But even going further back. So, what are your thoughts here on the Raiders? Yeah, um, yeah, we knew it was going to be a good year for them. Uh, they had, you know, a lot of seniors returning and just a lot of good players returning. Yeah, and anytime you can win over twenty games in a season, that's definitely a success, you know. And they got to the sectionals, uh, lost a tough game. To Brilliant, who just they got unlucky. Brilliant was just really hot that game and caught them on a bad night. But yeah, I mean they finished really strong um, from from January seventeenth on. They only lost one seventy five seventy eight game to New Holstein. Then they lost to Brilliant to end their season, but won all their other games uh, to that point. And yeah, just this a very successful year. Uh, Coach Jamie Vandermuse, uh, really good season in his first year, and I just think. Next year, I think Edelman's back, correct? Uh, let me check. Edelman, yeah, I, she is sure back. back. Yep, yep. Just double checking. Her and, and Brom, their top two scorers are back. So it's just like kind of like Chilton. I don't think there's any slowing down um, in Keel with uh, them next season. Do you think possibly, I know we'll talk New Holstein here, but, you know, potentially, you know, catching New Holstein. I know, like they've 
Fa- yeah, fairly I identical haven't... records, just a game difference. Go ahead. I haven't really looked like who all New Holstein is exactly losing. So it, it'll, it'll kind of depend on that. Obviously, Shizzle's still there, but I, I definitely th- I thought this year, even though they played a couple times, and I believe Keel only beat them once in the playoffs, you know, when it mattered, I still thought Keel at times was a better team. It, it, it kind of went back and forth through the year. They're both really similar, but. Yeah, I, I definitely think if those two uh, players, Edelman and Fromm, can take that next step, I definitely think they're in good position to be that, you know, second team behind Brilliant or maybe even give Brilliant knock them off next year. Yeah, I think, I mean, both these squads potentially could give Brilliant run from their money, right? But um, Brilliant looking, you know, phenomenal. We'll talk about them in a bit here. Noel Steen will we'll go to the Huskies here, 12 and 2. In conference, 21 and five overall. You know, one of the better seasons we've seen from the Holstein in a while. And, you know, they played very well. You mentioned Grace Shizzle. She led the way 24 a game. And then Peyton Grenzer as well, you know, averaging 13 and nine. And then, yeah, Alyssa Wolfel also there, averaging. Oh, they're all back. Seven, yeah, seven boards, three assists. Yeah, they are, like you, like you just said, I they're, was going to yeah, mention they're it. Back. They're all coming so back. So. Off. I didn't know if you think, you know, Keel, you know, coming into next year. I mean, they're not losing much either. Both really all these top three teams, I mean, as we'll talk about, you'll see a common theme. They're not losing much, right? I, I guess a lot of we're seeing a lot of star talent return in the EWC, which is good to see. So um, yeah, like like you mentioned right now, they're they're all coming back. They're all they're either gonna be seniors or juniors. So right now, Peyton Grenzer, a sophomore. So just to throw that out there as well. And she was their, arguably their second best player behind Chisel. But I think right now for a new host, you know, I, I, like I mentioned, I think all these teams, the, the top three teams here are going to mention New Holstein, Keel, and Brilliant. I think they're all going to be, you know, in competing for that EWC title. Yeah, I agree. And really what came down to it, I didn't know if Peyton Grenzer was graduating or not. And she's got two years left. And when I talked about Keel and New Holstein, I thought, okay, if she's graduating, I think New Holstein, I mean, I think Keel has a pretty good chance, but I don't know. I, I definitely think now that she's coming back and Wolfel's coming back, I definitely think along with Shizzle, they're they're my they're my second team next year. I, I just I believe it with, you know, their ability to score and Grenzer's uh presence inside at six two. And, yeah, I, I just think they're the second-best team now that Keel kind of loses their glue pieces or some of their some of their better, um, you know, third, fourth, fifth options. It'll still be a very good game against them. I just think with those players, New Holstein just has the upper hand. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. We'll talk tiers after we talk about this last team here. Brilliant Lions, you know, a successful year, uh, finishing just short of a state appearance here. I, I knew it was a tough game, right? Freedom. We we talked about it here. I don't know. You know, that Freedom team was very good. So that was a tough sectional final match. I and mean, that's just how it is sometimes. But yeah, Megan Schumann leading the way yet again, averaging 18 and a half points a game, set and seven boards to go with that. And the Miami averaging nine points a game and then 3.6 assists. And you'll hear their names on the conference, on the conference listing, of course, but yeah, just a tough way, tough loss for the Lions, you know, ending their season early. But, you know, that star-studded junior class, they're, they're returning next year. They'll be seniors. So, you know, that's something to always look out for here. For the Lions, I, I think I, right now, I think they're my, they're my favorite to win. I mean, repeat as EWC champs. But, again, time will tell. So, Robert, you know, what do you think about the Brilliant Lions in this 2021 to 2022 season? Yeah, you know. I don't know what's up with this uh, 2022 class. It just seemed in the boys and the girls. It's just like, I don't know what happened in that class. You know, some classes you just get down. But, yeah, I mean, brilliant. You look at them. Like, all 2023 is their top, their top number of top players coming back. And next year, it's it's going to be, it's going to be very interesting, I think, to see, like, what kind of step they take. Are they going to take a big, you know, step forward and just – go to a whole nother level or are they just going to, you know, sit back and kind of just, just dominate the way they've been the last couple of years. It'll be very interesting to see, um, you know, Hannah Schimmick, really their only player of any, like who played this year is gone. I think more so just 
they lose is her leadership. I think she's a very good leader. But yeah, other than that, I mean, all their all their uh, really their top what six scores return. Yeah. So yeah, I, I just think yeah, I just whatever, however these girls just you know make their next step uh, coming into this next season. Um, that that'll just be that'll be what de- determines them. I, mean, I don't know if they're gonna beat Freedom. Freedom's got basically everyone back, so they're probably not gonna be a very challenging game to beat Freedom. But um, yeah, we'll see. I mean, they got Megan Schumann coming back. I'd say probably the top returning, well, easily the top returning player in the conference. Um, yeah, so when you have that, uh, no bad days there. Exactly, and that's why I think you can't. You know, I, I know I know freedom uh, will would be tough. You know, let's say if they make it that far, but hey, you know, you got Megan Schumann, one of the top players, you know, in the conference, and even gained state recognition as well. You know, getting recognized as top player in the state. So I think that's certainly, you know, on your side, but yeah, I mean, there's a lot of expectations for this brilliant squad coming next year, you know, with the talent that's returning, um, it just, it, you got, you got to hope they do very well because like, like you mentioned, you know, top six players or scorers returning and just, you know, even their top three, like all their players here on, um, you know, with sports, they're, they're all returning that are listed, you know, in the accolades. So, and in the leaders. So I, I, that's something to look out for here for the brilliant Lions, but, yeah, Robert, we're going to talk now. We'll, we'll talk about the conference and we'll, t- we'll kind of make our tiers, you know, for next year, what we're thinking. So we're not going to put have to put a team, you know, set in stone, but just kind of like, let's do some groupings here. So, you know, bottom tier, which it's always a bummer to, you know, we don't want to put them in the bottom, but just how we think it's going to work out. You know, Valors is a team you look just based on, you know, who they're losing, right? Um, falls, it might be. Down still, Roncalli, then even potentially TR. You might you might be able to put those all those four bottom teams back together. I know it might be a whole different a little different order, but would, would that be a fair thing to say? Yeah, I think I I would put two rivers down there just because I I mean we haven't seen a proven shooter returning, and I mean not that you can't win without shooting threes. I mean everyone loves the threes, and a lot of people like to say pound the ball inside still, but yeah, I, I definitely think those. I, I mean, I'm looking at this. It, it's I think it's pretty similar to what it is this year, but yeah, I, I'd say those are your bottom four teams. Yeah, that's why, I, and I'll go with you, and I'll, I'll say that as well. You know, I, I think we'll see something similar to what we just saw this past year, and that credits, you know, these these players. They're returning, right? A lot of the star talent we saw in the EWC, they're coming back for another year, or even maybe even a couple, right? So that, that when that happens, you'll see. You know, you, you won't see that that big, you know, maybe that shift in the standings. So um, I, I think we'll see something very, you know, comparable to this. Um, I think Chilton, you know, I think they'll be around 500 again. And from there, you know, I think the top three, I think the, that's that's going to be that. Um, I, I think Chilton's like in a tier of their own. They're in the middle, right? They're going to be they're in the, around the 500 tier. And then mm-hmm. you got you got the competitors. You got the Kiel Raiders, the New Olsen Huskies, and the Brilliant Lions. Those those three teams, you know, 20 plus win teams the past season, they're coming back. They have expectations, you know, 20 plus wins, I would think, because based on the talent we're seeing return for this team, I, I think that's certainly in the realm of possibilities for these squads. And, you know, they're they're well on their way to do so. Do you agree? Yeah. Yeah. I just pretty much, yeah, look at the top three teams. I think Brilliant's a, a step ahead of those two teams. It's very close. Wouldn't be surprised at all. If uh, one of those two teams or uh, gives them a run for their money one night, but yeah, I, I just think that you pretty much hit it on the head. It, it's pretty much going to be, I think, exactly how the standings were this year. And you might see a Valders TR, uh, you know, one of them, Ron College, Sheboygan Falls flip. But the tiers, I think, pretty much stay the, exactly the same. Yeah, I, I I agree with you on that. And let's talk some stat leaders here. Uh, points per game. We'll, we'll read the top five here. Grace Shizzle, she's returning, 24.2 a game. Olivia Hurl, 23.1. Megan Schumann, 18 and a half. Emma Edelman, 15.8. And then Kenzie Graff, 15 a game. And then yeah, Kate gets there as well with 15. So really two at the five spot. Rebounds per game. Olivia Hurl, 9.4. Peyton Grenzer, 8.6. And Alice Kekis, 8.1. Assists per game leaders. Liz Wolfel, 4.8. Jocelyn April, 3.7. The Maya Emmer, 3.6. So that wraps up the stat leaders there. And then we'll talk all conference. 
full disclosure, these are not on Wisports yet, so I don't know who enters that, but you they probably should enter that soon. But however, you know, Robert made an excellent EWC sports post, you know, covering the conference team. So we'll read them off there also. It's on Twitter. So, you know, we can always pin that on the EWC Sports Twitter if you want to take a look at that as well. But, yeah, let's talk about the conference teams here, Robert. All right, we had three unanimous selections this year, and all three, rightfully so, right? So Olivia Hurl, Megan Schumann, and Grace Shizzle, all unanimous. And then Emma Edelman and Allison Kakis round out that first team. Robert, what do you think of this first team? You agree? Yeah, I think they hit it right on the head. You know, obviously, there's, I think, you know, always when you look at those bottom couple spots, they're always close, but, but I think they got it right. Yeah, I agree. I think that was, I think that's how, how it should have looked, and it does. So let's talk second team here. Kenzie Graff, Carissa Hummel, Maya Emmer, Corn Fromm. And then Jocelyn April. So we saw two kill Raiders. We saw Kenzie Graff then get on. And then Carissa Hummel from Valders and Maya Emmer are brilliant. So I mean this this second team squad, I think it looks I think it looks good. I mean, I, I think you you feel the same. Yeah, you know, obviously I think there were a couple players who like, you know, you could have argued maybe, you know, whatever Keel player you liked better, whatever TR player you liked better on the first team. But I definitely, yeah, I think, obviously, I don't have any problems with that second team. And, yeah, I mean, really, that's how it is with your top 10 players. I think they all look pretty good. Yeah, nice job to the coaches, you know, for making these conference squads. They look great. Uh, let's name the honorable mentions here. Peyton Grenzer of New Holstein, Alyssa Wolfel, Addison Schliwe, and then Alan Hurl, and then Olivia Shue from Brilliant. So that wraps up, you know, the, the five honorable mentions, I think. You know, that's fair. I think Grenzer as a sophomore, as I, I think all these younger players who, you know, receive these spots, I think they're, even though there's not many seniors graduating, you know, as we said, I think these are all, you know, players who we could certainly see sneak up to that second team spot next year, just, you know, based on the progression that they've made. And I think they got the honorable mention stuff. And I, I, think, I think they got it right. So with that, Robert, you know, you want to talk about player of the year and then also talk about some all state mentions here so Olivia Hurl gets player of the year and wow I mean she had quite the year I know we've talked about it this whole year covering it 23 a game 9.4 boards I'll say it again 3.6 assists dominant season for Hurl and I I know you know this is something we usually don't see here Robert uh, a team you know 7-7 seven and seven in conference 14-12 and 12 overall and having the conference player of the year I mean that's not something you, you see a lot but I think Olivia Hurl is an, is a perfect exception to this, right? Yeah, you know, I think they got it exactly right. Uh, Hurl won uh, Player of the Year, and she was my pick as we posted all year. And as I posted all year, I just think, yeah, you, you mentioned the 7-7 seven and seven team. You know, obviously, you know, most, most Player of the Years are from your best team or your top two teams. But, yeah, I just think she had – she had a considerably better like statistical year and just took over more games and was like, more important to her team Chilton uh, during the year. And that's just, you know, she was always just like, wow, like you saw her putting up these big numbers and you're, you just like looked like, Oh, how is she like doing this? Or like, is she just getting fouled a lot? Is she, you know, getting them in mean, garbage time? And no, you, you watch her play and you're just like, wow, she'd light up the book every time, every time you you'd see her. And it's just like, yeah, just a very tough player, and I, yeah, I would have voted her uh, player of the year also. Yeah, I think right call there. Let's talk about, so the EWC for the girls, they got some awesome all-state recognition here, and, you know, we had a first team or two honorable mentions, and yeah, Megan Schumann gets first team all-state. They certainly recognize her game as, you know, one of the top, you know, in her class, right? And and she's she's done very well, averaging 18 and a half, like we said this past year, seven boards, and then 37% she shot from three. Uh, I think the right choice there, first team. And then we saw two honorable mentions there. Grace Shizzle averaging 24.2 points a game, and she shot 41% from three. And then Olivia Hurl, I mean, we've mentioned it, player of the year. She got an honorable mention spot as well. So, Robert, I think a very successful year, you know, for the EWC, you know, getting that state recognition for the girls' side. Yeah, and that's always good, and as expected, too. You know, you looked at the ending – of this year you just you just knew that you know we had some of the better players here 
as you looked and you know not many girls averaging you know mid 20s or or putting up uh, three three years in a row of first team unanimous so how many conferences have that so it's just like I, I think it was very well fitting and yeah I think the state uh, people who vote on it they got it right there also I agree and yeah, looking for next year now, I guess, to wrap up here. Um, I, I know we're looking – we're still looking for a girls' team in the conference, you know, to make it that run to state. I think that's kind of the big thing, you know, we're waiting for here in the EWZ. We've, see, we've seen the boys have success on state runs. You know, we'll talk about that next Tuesday when our, our boys' season recap gets released. But, you know, I think these teams – I think they're due, right? I mean, we saw Keel come a win away, you know, a few years ago. Uh, brilliant, we just saw come a win away. And I think like these teams like New Holstein, it's just a bummer that they're going to have to match up probably in a sectional semi like what we saw this year where they might not have that chance, you know, to make that run for state because someone's going to you know have multiple teams because they're, someone's got to play someone. And that's just how it is. But hopefully we can see one of these squads, you know, in the upcoming years. We mentioned New, New Holstein. They'll be good for you know, a year or a couple, or a couple of years. So they have Brilliant, you know, they have that class next year, that, that loaded senior class. And then Keel as well. I mean, they got they have players returning for next year and the years to come. So, right, Robert. I mean, to wrap up here, hopefully we can see one of these teams make a run. Yeah, I definitely think next year is the year if anyone wants to. It's going to be that probably that Freedom Squad, unless you know you'd never want to see an injury, but they happen. So they either need that or just to get a really good shooting game and a really off night from probably Freedom or them to just get knocked off because I, I don't know they they looked really good at state obviously will pawn just uh beating them in the finals but still uh very talented group there and yeah I definitely you mentioned you know meeting the team in sectionals or regional final whatever yeah that, that's that's tough there but I definitely think next year it, it's got to be their year because you know you look Schumann and Chisel are gone after this year so in the Keel girls too so I think Fromm has two more years left, but yeah, yep. it's this is their year. Exactly, and that that wraps it up here. Um, yeah, I mean this this comes out now on that third on on Thursday today, and we wanted this out earlier, but just with scheduling, you know, there's a lot of up episodes coming out. State happening for the boys had to talk about that, but we're thankful we got we got to get together and talk, you know, about the successful you know season in the Eastern Wisconsin Conference for girls basketball. So. You know, we're looking forward to next year, of course. And with that, talking scheduling one more time here. Tomorrow, we got Journey to a Million on here. So that's going to be Zach Rouse, Jared Blusky, and myself. We'll be talking, you know, we'll be doing some off-season previews. So with that, we, we're we talking Titans and Packers this week, and that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, next Monday, Jordan Lorenz returns for episodes here. Episode 55, he will be on, making his return from his vacation. So we'll be on that talking some sports, him, him and myself. And then, yeah, next Tuesday, we'll be doing the EWC boys season recap. So be back here. You know, high school basketball will be wrapping up the boys. And that officially concludes our basketball season here then. And then we'll be talking spring sports. And I know Robert's got some good stuff planned for that. And we do as well here at the sports crew. So, yeah, with that, Robert, you got anything else? No, that should be it. Awesome, yeah. And with that, thank you all for listening to yet another episode of Jordan and Drew, the sports crew, the perfect podcast for you.